Hello everyone, today I'd like to introduce Alois Swingy. Uh, Alois is someone that I've had the pleasure of working with and we've known each other since I think 2008 and I'd like him to share his perspectives on leadership. But before we do that, Alois, would you just like to say a few words about your own uh, background and career? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Tony, for the invitation. And uh, indeed, uh, time flies. We know each other already for quite some time. Um, I'm Swiss. I uh, studied here in Switzerland and I had the opportunity very early in my professional career actually to go abroad for a construction materials company. And the great thing about working abroad was that I was immediately thrown into challenges in Latin America, Mexico and Venezuela, that basically mm -hmm. late 80s and in the 90s and then uh, uh, coming back for that company to work at the headquarters. Um, and then about 12, now 13 years ago, a headhunter approached me for an opportunity here at the World Economic Forum. He said, always you need to do something different in life. And uh, I think he was right. Um, and uh, here at the forum, I'm a member of the managing board and the way we handle things here in this organization, board members tend to shift their responsibilities from uh, time to time. So I've been overseeing finance, uh, HR, but also had the uh, opportunity to set up the Center for Cybersecurity here. Um, huh. I'm also looking at the after the uh, relationships here to the Swiss hosts, meaning working with the Swiss federal government, but also with the local community in Davos. So interesting, um, interesting opportunities. Excellent. And I think in your field, you have a lot of uh, opportunities to explore thought leadership, not just people leadership, I think. Oh, de definitely. And I think this is uh, a particular challenge for our organization here, um, because uh, this is a, a place, obviously, if you follow our organization, you see all the kind of material we publish. And, and so our heroes here in the organization, they tend to be thought leaders. Mm -hmm. And it is not necessarily that if you're strong in thought leadership, that you're also strong in people leadership. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's a constant tension here and, and challenge in our organization. So kind of going into the three areas to explore with you, um, one of them is about a personal leadership experience that you yourself have had where it's created a breakthrough or it's been a major milestone event in terms of your own development as a leader. And this could be something may have happened, you know, in your early days of development or more recently. But I'd just be curious to know if there's something that you recall as a moment of particular significance in leadership. Yeah, I think there was a, a particular moment uh, by now, nearly 20 years ago, mm -hmm. um, where um, I was tasked to set up a new organization, a new business. And, um, and uh, we did that with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy. We also managed to um, uh, get very interesting people joining that organization. And it was sort of a, an entrepreneurial experiment, meaning that within a large organization, setting up a small, more of startup-like organization. And as these kind of projects or initiatives have it, then um, senior leadership maybe gets tired a bit about this uh, unruly, uh, uh, you know, young um, uh, pirates there. And um, they engaged a, a professional services firm actually to prove that it was a bad idea to oh, have really? such a, uh, a, a business. And, uh, and so um, we uh, then started to see which direction these professional services firm were, was sort of uh, uh, making their case and the, the developing their case. And um, we gathered together the leadership team of that uh, organization. And over a weekend, we worked on sort of a rebuttal of the uh, proposal for the uh, mm -hmm. for, for, for that consulting company, and um, it uh, it took quite some courage then in an executive committee meeting. You know, mm -hmm. um, after uh, the the case was made by the consultant, to sort of stand up and say, "Gentlemen," at that time, no ladies around that table. Mm -hmm. um, "Gentlemen, there is another view of looking at this," and um, uh, at the end, we were closed down anyway. 
However, the CEO had to acknowledge that uh, the, 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 the courage of uh, uh, the team and the work of the team uh, was, was really um, quite impressive. And uh, for me, that's an, sort of an unforgettable moment where, you know, in times of crisis, uh, it, it does help to rally the troops, get together and, uh, you know, try to defend what you, what you believe in. So for me, that was a, like an unforgettable moment. And very interestingly, the group that did that, mm-hmm. we still meet each other every six months uh, for a dinner here in Switzerland. That's excellent. Yeah, excellent. Um, why did you think that it was going to take a lot of courage with the executive board? You know, we're, we're talking a, an organization that uh, was very successful and... Uh, uh, very successful for a very long time, world leader in its field. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it was not necessarily a culture where you would, you know, go against um, the expectations of the senior leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was uh, it was very clear that, you know, the project didn't have the support of all the members around the table. So, uh um, and I think it was unheard of that, uh, you know, somebody would just say at the end of a presentation, um, you know, Mr. Chairman or CEO at the time, um, could I have 15 minutes of, of your time and uh, mm-hmm. uh, actually get up and you know, present your story, which was totally um, unexpected. It was not in the agenda that there was a rebuttal. So um, mm-hmm. I think, yeah, it was uh, it was for me really sort of an unforgettable moment. It, it was it was nerve wracking. Second one I'd be interested in is where you have actually observed another person or, or a team, for that matter, um, engaging in leadership and practicing leadership, where they have created a breakthrough or a major milestone, something that stuck with you. Uh, since uh, as something quite significant. Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah. Um, same company, 10 years back, even 10 years earlier. So we're going way back in time now. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time I was involved in the construction of, you know, greenfield plants. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, late 80s uh, in uh, a remote part of Mexico, we built such a greenfield plant, uh, quite a complex project. I mean, back uh, then it was like $120 million uh, investment. It was literally, it was desert um, where, where that was uh, being built. And it was a very uh, multicultural team that put that together. Um, and, um, and, and, and also it required literally hundreds of people to, to build something like that over a couple of years. And what I found very interesting that the leader who was tasked to build a next greenfield plant, mm-hmm. he did not assemble his own troops to do the next project. So he was not the same leader, he was a different leader. He literally um, transported the successful team of project one okay. to his project two. Mm-hmm. and built on the experience of that team. And for him, it was very important that he wanted to keep this successful winning team as intact as possible mm-hmm. uh, because he felt that we could pull off a, an even more complex and even bigger project. And he was very careful with inserting newcomers to that, to that project. And that um, sort of not not invented here um, counter approach. Mm -hmm. So in the sense that I want to work with the team that did something for another leader. That Mm -hmm. was, that was quite an impressive thing to see. It was his last project before he retirement. So he didn't have anything to prove or anything to lose. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, with that, from that style and approach, I actually learned quite a bit um, how, you know, you, you protect a winning team, but also you look at the team as a whole and you look at the different skill sets, but also personalities to assemble uh, Mm -hmm. a second winning team. Interestingly enough, that second project uh, finished 10% below budget and six months ahead of time. We're talking a project that is about a three year 
time span. And mm. if you think about the financial impact of being under budget and six months faster, mm. it was huge, uh, a yeah. huge return on investment, actually. Absolutely, yeah. But I'm curious with that uh, example, um, that is that something you can imagine you could advocate for every situation? That if a team works well, you can re replicate it somewhere else? Or do you think it was due to a number of uh, factors that perhaps in another situation may not mm. be the case? That's a very good point, Tony. I, I think there's probably a few things that were sort of well aligned. Um, mm. It was in the same country, so we, the project happened in Mexico. Uh, it was not overly difficult to convince the team members and their families to move from the desert to the Pacific coast. Uh, yeah. It was a very lovely place to live, so uh, it was a bit, uh, uh, so that was sort of an added bonus. Um, I, I think that the team as a whole also felt honored mm. to be asked to go to a bigger, more difficult place. Um, is that something you can replicate? You can probably replicate it if, you know, the scope of the project or if the mandate of the project is similar. I could imagine, I don't know the world, but if you're in the professional services field, um, that, you know, leaders frequently um, will try to do that as well. You know, they, they yeah. want to keep a winning group together because they know they can deliver for their client. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting one because um, in the spirit of innovation, sometimes you would imagine that a leader should always be trying to come up with a new idea rather than use something that's tried and tested every time. But I think a lot of leaders in role in situations do tend to fall back on what they've learned before, what they've experienced before. And I don't know what you feel about that. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You know, innovation can also come from a group or can also come from self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know what you're doing, if you know sort of what your um, what your mandate is, maybe you also feel freer to experiment with new things. Um, but by the way, this project saw a lot of very interesting sort of special innovations at the time. It was, um, if I may illustrate that, it, it was after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And why did that matter? There was a lot of equipment available in former Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a heavy industry. Um, a lot of that equipment actually was available for deployment in, in, in the West, so to speak. And we were working with Western suppliers, encouraging them to go and hunt for equipment in the East and actually Westernize that equipment for our purposes. That was one of the reasons why we were 10% below budget. So, okay. so I, I, I'm trying to make the case that if people know what they're doing, actually, and if, they're, if their mind is in the right place, you can get to quite productive innovation. Yeah. yeah. I have also personally experienced situations where examples of good leadership um, can be um, emulated in the form of what's called peer-to-peer -peer reviews. Mm. So I've seen teams go into another country where there, where there has been an example of good leadership and learn from it and then take it back to their own country. Um, Interesting that you mentioned that, actually. Um, before I started um, to be... Um, entrusted with with my role in that project i was actually sent for three months uh, into a um, other um, uh, country to learn how they how they did the last project so in that organization it was it was quite um it was quite frequent there and maybe in order to illustrate that also with another um, example at the time the organization had a annual or biannual competition mm -hmm. for the company or the team that stole the best idea <laughs> from another company in the group. So the, 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 the team that was honored was not the one that invented it. It was the one who adopted it. Um, and that I was probably a bit in the spirit at the time in that organization. Mm. Great examples. Thank you.
I, I now like to turn to the third area, um, particularly where you're sitting now, because um, a kind of leading edge thinking about the future. Um, but I'd be interested to know, from your perspective, what do you think is required of leaders going forward? Do you have a view on that? It feels a bit like a question, do you know what the stock market is going to do <laughs> next year? And why I'm saying this, I think we're really in unprecedented times. Mm. I, I, I think we're somehow like approaching a bit of a perfect storm. Um, if you're a leader today, probably regardless of the industry you're in, you're faced with, with very um, important economic challenges. Um, you know, think about inflation, uh, these, these, these kind of things, a looming recession, depending on where you are. Um, uh, you have currency uh, challenges. If you look at what happened to the euro or other currencies, mm -hmm. um, there are operational challenges as a consequence of the geopolitical tensions that we see, you know, no more, um, you know, seamless global supply chains. Um, I learned the last few months a, a term that I didn't know before. It's called trust shoring. You're not offshoring or onshoring. You go to places where you can trust that you can construct things and build things there for your supply chain. So mm -hmm. operationally, life has become much more complicated. Um, mm -hmm. As a, if you're in a business, can you pass on the cost increases that you're suffering? Um, you know, we all know here in Europe uh, or Central Europe what's going to happen or what's happening with the electricity and energy uh, cost. And, and, and then if that were, was not enough, I think we have uh, also a couple of people challenges um, ahead. I mean, um, uh, you know, last year we were all busy reading about the Great Resignation. Um, now yeah. suddenly we hear about, um, you know, hiring freezes in... Uh, in, in, in the same companies that were sort of sucking up the talents of the big resignation. Mm -hmm. um, we've also seen that after uh, the COVID situation, a lot of people left their, you know, business, their industry they were in. I read somewhere that 70% of employees in Germany who left their employer did not return to the same industry. Mm -hmm. What does that do to the skill set you have available? I mean, probably you and I face it when we go to a restaurant and see how difficult it is for mm -hmm. a restaurant to find staff and, you know, and yep. chefs yep. And, and, and all of that. And as if that was not enough, um, I think uh, many uh, leaders of our generation are struggling with the next generation or the next after the next generation. We seem to have, at least for now, very different expectations from an employer than maybe we were um, ha having in our time. So um, it's complicated to be a leader right now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to, what advice would you give to an aspiring leader, someone that's kind of just setting out on the journey of leadership? Uh, where, where do you think they should focus their, their efforts? Yeah, <laughs> it's a very difficult um, a very difficult question. Uh, there's a few sort of thoughts that come to my mind when I uh, when I think about this. Uh, they might be buzzwords, but um, I'm, I'm going to use them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think terms like um, servant leadership mm -hmm. or authentic leadership comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, I think times where authority or what's on your business card, or how your office looks like, um, you know, that that will not help necessarily in today's time. Mm -hmm. um, I think leading from the front again is also um, something that, that is important. Um, and maybe I can color a bit what I meant with servant leadership or authentic leadership and authentic leadership, not the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think as a leader today, it's very important to be seen, to be in the service of the institution you work in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do, and I, I'm speaking here also from where I sit in, in our current organizations, leaders who are seen as serving themselves 
or looking sort of to to put themselves on stage or working on their own career it's usually quite quickly visible and it is not appreciated by troops mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. people people want to see and want to work with leaders mm -hmm. who, <clears throat> who who have the interest of the institution they work with or work mm -hmm. for have mm -hmm. that in mind one i would link to that perhaps i don't know whether you agree is trust oh. uh, as, as a leader it's essential to have trust yes uh, as a foundation really for the team that you're leading um in order to succeed in anything you're so right and i'm not sure if the camera actually points to my cheat sheet in front of me because uh, the word trust is there pretty <laughs> pretty big as well and and, and that's for me uh, uh, maybe the, the key word when it comes to authentic leadership you know the, mm -hmm. sort of the the good old uh, you know i do as i say or i say as i do um mm -hmm. is is a fundament for, for for trust and i think the other the other element that I've seen, and maybe it depends a bit on the culture of the organization or the type of business the organization is in, but, it, but in our organization, that is sort of a knowledge uh, workers uh, uh, place, um, you know, it's, it's very important for leaders to pay attention to literally all levels of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, just working sort of with your next line uh, is 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 not sufficient i think people want to um employees want to know who who is sitting in you know at the top of an organization what kind of people are they what, mm -hmm. what kind of values do they have yeah. um and um and, and i think if the if the picture the leadership sort of projects and the reception sort of overlaps then you probably end up with a trusting relationship. It's hugely important, as you mentioned. Yep. Alois, thank you very much. Well, uh, thanks, Tony. Continue good luck with your, uh, your own leadership endeavors at uh, the World Economic Forum. Thank you, Tony.